American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil uh, Armstrong, yeah. Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that um, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is to, is to make a, a significant difference in, in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. And, when I was young, I, I, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, I, when I got older. Um, people kept asking me, and, and, um, but, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be, would be really cool. And uh, the, the reason I thought that was because um, I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that a, um, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, and that's really true. Uh, if, you if you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today uh, would be, you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for, um, you know, being able to fly. So I, uh, I originally came out to, to California to uh, try to figure out how to improve the energy density of, of, um, uh, of, of electric vehicles, basically to, to try to figure out if there was an advanced capacitor that, that, that could serve as an alternative to batteries. And um, that was in 95, and uh, that's also when the internet uh, started to happen. And, and it, I, I thought, well, I can either uh, pursue this, tech, this technology where success may, be, may not be one of the possible outcomes, which is always tricky, um, or uh, participate in the internet and, and be, be part of it. So I decided to, to drop out. Um, now, obviously, you, fortunately, we're, we're, we're past graduation, so I can't be accused of recommending that to you. And w when I started SpaceX, um, I, it, it actually, it, initially, I thought that, well, there's, there's no way one could possibly start a rocket company. I, I wasn't that crazy. Um, but, but then uh, I, I thought, well, what is a way to um, increase NASA's budget? That was actually my initial goal. Uh, you need to work, if you, if, depending on how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Uh, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So, uh, work hard, like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. Um, and, I mean, if you do simple math, say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as done, as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. So, creating, try, trying to build a company and have it succeed is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, what tends to happen is it's sort of quite exciting for the first several months of, of starting a company, and then, then reality sets in, things don't go as well as planned, customers aren't signing up, the technology or the product isn't working as well as you thought. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and then that can sometimes be compounded by a recession, um, and uh, it can be very, very painful for several years. Um, so I think, um, frankly, starting a company, you, I would advise people to have a high pain tolerance. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world, like, you know. Um, doing something that has high value to, to people um, and, and frankly even if it's something if it's like um, just a little game um, or 
you know, the <laughs> some improvement in photo sharing or something. If it if it has, if it has a small amount of, of good uh, for a large number of people, um, that's I mean I think that's that's fine. Like stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. Don't just follow the trend. So um, you may have heard me say to, to, that it's good to think in terms of the, the physics approach, the first principles, uh, which is rather than reasoning by analogy, you boil things down to the most fundamental truths you can imagine and you reason up from there. And this is a good way to figure out if, if, if something really makes sense or if it's just what everybody else is doing. Um, it, it, it's hard to think that way. You can't think, think that way about everything. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. Um, and that framework was developed by, by physicists to figure out counterintuitive things um, like quantum mechanics. So it's really a powerful, powerful method.